wow, my dude, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good, how you doing? All right. All right, we're live. Are you ready to chat, my dude? Why not? Wait, oh, did you say why not? Yeah, why not, sure. Okay, well, I guess here's like my general question. Why do you feel like you have to tie yourself to people that aren't even alive anymore to be like proud of yourself or to feel like some level of success? I'm really curious. I've never understood this feeling. About personal success. I think that's, I get this a lot online. Um, it's not about personal success or failure. I get this a lot from people who say that you're, your personal failures by aligning yourself to your race or whatever. This isn't even really as much about race even for me. I mean, it's about, I don't, I mean, I'm not in favor of a white ethno state in general or any of those types of, of considerations. I mean, your name is literally is the Polish about, nightmare and you reference the Warsaw uprising. Are we going to pretend now that nothing that you said in any of this conversation was about race? Are we, we're going to totally talk about race. Okay. We can definitely talk about race. You would like, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm uh, sorry. I, I was just under the impression it sounded like you were like heavily invested in, in the race thing, but it, I mean, we can. It's definitely a topic that comes up a lot with me, and I'm definitely very, uh, I guess, interested in it. Certainly, yes. Okay. But, I mean, it, you 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 specifically called this out when I referenced white culture. Yeah, you understand the difference between white why why there isn't really like white culture, or black culture, but there is black culture, or whatever. Look, the blacks. We took the blacks from Africa, I get it. And they don't really, they can't trace their lineage back. I get that. I get that Americans can trace their lineage back to Europe. Um, but that doesn't mean that whites don't also have a culture. Black culture is kind of a reaction to white culture, in fact. Okay, I don't necessarily agree with that, but um, I, I'm just, not. this is like the general, this is like the general reason why there is like a, a unity of black people in the United States. But for white people, it just, it works a little bit differently because we are Germans and Russians and, uh, British, English people, whatever, we can trace it back a little bit differently. It didn't seem like you understood that distinction on Twitter, but I guess you do now? I do. I do. Okay. That too, and that's also, in my opinion, nonsensical, because we're not, all, most American whites are not one specific Irish or German or whatever. I mean, personally, I'm a mix of many different European ethnicities, um, as many people are. That's why white American is different, for instance, from Polish. Polish sure. culture is different. So from white American. Why do you feel so strongly that this is like such an important part of who you are, this like white culture thing? Why is this so important to you? It's not about who I, I mean, I am white, certainly, and I am a part of white culture, but there are things that I enjoy from black culture. I love the NBA, for instance. I love sports in general. Um, there are many sports that are dominated by blacks and by Hispanics, for instance, like the Houston Astros who just won the World Series. They were a team of mostly Hispanics and that, mostly Dominicans and Okay, but like, okay, so like you're, you're running back on like everything you said now because you literally were saying like the founding fathers recognized immigration was to be the for the benefit of the native culture and stuff. Like, yes, they did. Okay, so why is like the, the whole and whiteness I, I, and everything, why is this so important to you? Is why, what I'm asking, I guess. Country, when it was at its highest power, which essentially to me would probably be in the 1950s, it would be post war. And I mean, obviously, there are reasons for why that was. But if this is an argument that I get from Jared Taylor often as well, is that when you look at American, the world, in general, whites, when they were the vast majority of the country, 90%, which is what the, this was before 1960, the entire United States was 90% white in general. At that point, we were the leaders of the world. Now we're diminishing more and more each year, whereas the Chinese, for instance, are raising and the Chinese are 90% Han Chinese. And the Chinese are engaging in things like eugenics, for instance, which we would never do in this country. And they're doing it on an industrial scale there. Do you think we should things engage like in eugenics? I think it's something we should certainly have. Are you pro-socialism? That, that doesn't necessarily... I mean, obviously, a socialist structure would be more... Uh, have a lot more ability to implement a eugenic system because they would have a central top-down economic structure, a central top-down political structure. It just seems I, it, it seems very weird to me that you would say America was at its height in the '50s, and then you like you're citing America's like ability, like r really the, the capitalism that drove us, our individual outlook on the world, the individual freedoms that Americans enjoy. And now you're like, well, in order to get back to that level of freedom we had, we need to literally turn into eugenics advocating China. No. I'm not, I'm not, not 
saying that at all. I'm okay. saying that China, China recognizes racial differences. We don't. I mean, we kind of have this, uh, this, I mean, we do. I think there are many people who do, obviously, and it depends on which, you know, what study you're taking part in. There are biologists that will obviously tell you the differences between different races, and there are some. Yeah, why does any of this matter? Um, because we're having a discussion. I mean, like, you, you invited me here to talk about white culture, right? So I'm answering questions from you. You want... Oh, yeah, sure. And I'm asking you, like, why does it matter, even if there are racial differences? Why can't we have different because types of people country, in the country? Nation comes from white pursuits 90 to 95 percent in general. OK, That's but we have like much. successful immigrant founded businesses in the United States. Like we have people that have immigrated from other parts of the world that still contribute here. Why would they immigrate here then? Because it's the United States of America, because there's a ton of economic opportunity here. And economic opportunity. Because the white culture here was superior. It has nothing to do with the white culture here. It has to do with the opportunity. Nobody comes here. People don't migrate here from or immigrate here from Nigeria because they want to be part of the white culture because they want the economic opportunity here. Successful culture. Wait, I'm sorry. Your mic cut out. What did you say? Successful culture. O okay, I don't know. I, I. What do you What do you do? Uh, that's not important. It, it kind of is, though. I'm trying to understand. Like, I'm trying to get inside your head because I don't understand. Like, you think that people, like, across the ocean, like, try to find, like, the, like, uh, okay, I have my degree. I'm a very successful business person. I'm ready to go and invest. Like, I'm going to go see who has the best culture. Like, I, that's just, like, a really strange I mean, argument. They're going to they're like, choose. Okay, that's ridiculous. They're going to choose the opportunity. Yeah, economic opportunity. Stuff. Yeah. What does that have to do with white culture or, or culture, the best culture for me? The more... those, because white cultures create those economic opportunities, just like Asian cultures do. I mean, okay, but we're like, high... we're, we're like, we're just like Asian cultures. Um, we're at like, what, 60% white people in America? It still seems like we've got a lot of the like largest companies of the world yes. here. There are still people that immigrate here. Like, we... Yes, because we still have economic opportunity. I mean, it's not, and we have, there are a number of reasons why people immigrate here. The, mo the biggest part is the fact that being poor here is better than being rich in their countries for the most part. I mean, the, the, the vast majority of the rest of the world is still impoverished. So, I mean, the, the fact vast that people majority, are Well, okay, so firstly, I'm not, I mean... The, are you American? Maybe. I think mo it's probably okay to be poor in most of the Western world. In fact, you're probably better off being poor in, in a lot of more, I say, socialized countries, but in countries with better welfare structures. You're better off being poor in Germany. I know that's for sure. You're better off being poor in any Nordic country. In uh, whiter countries than the U.S. <laughs> okay, but them being white isn't intrinsic to them being successful. It's not like if there were, you know, 20% black people there, all of a sudden the social structures disappear that provide like socialized medicine or the things that provide like education. That's exactly what happened in South Africa. I mean, the, the, they had been, the whites were a majority in that country for a very long time. Uh, and up until about the early 1900s, in fact. So, so you're slowly, saying that at some early, point in the United States, somehow we're just going to reach the tipping point. There are going to be too many black people here, and then all of a sudden everything is going to go to shit. There are going to be too not too many non-white people here, not black people. Okay. The black too many non-white people here, but Chinese people are okay. So what kind of brown people are we talking about? Uh, uh, like this, the topic of immigration, when you're talking about that, I mean, mm -hmm. the issue is politics, right? I mean, it's not, it's, it, for me, it is, all right? Now, I imagine you're a liberal, right? Or you would describe, describe yourself as leaning more towards the left or democratically, right? Sure. Okay, so you, uh, are, are you aware that seven out of 10 Hispanic families in the United States are lifelong Democrats? I mean, for vote among voting families? Sure. Our Hispanics that come here, the more left this country goes. The, it, it's... Okay. That's undeniable, right? Okay. So I like conservatism. I like small government. I like low taxes. I like, you know, the Second Amendment. I like a lot of conservative ideals. Not all of them. But you don't like, you're them. not a big fan of the Constitution? Why? Because the Constitution allows you the right to vote as long as you're a naturalized citizen. And it sounds like you disagree with the naturalization process. The people that immigrate here that are Hispanic are as much of an American as you are. Why don't you like the fact that they can vote? Are you against the Constitution? You're just hitting me with a lot of questions right in a row. There. It's not okay, a lot. Of, it's a really basic point. thing. So if you come to the United States and you're naturalized as a citizen, you're endowed the right to vote, right? This is what we've decided. This is what was written in the Constitution. Do you disagree with that notion? Yes. yes. Okay, but we, so that's why you... we should have been. That's so... why we should have been choosing like we did for the first 200 years of this country who comes here and takes part in American culture. We did choose. And then we made a different decision because it's granted to Congress the power. To the heart. Do you know what that decision was? Yeah. 
interested? Do you know how that law was changed in immigration policy? I sure do. Yep. It was the 1965 Immigration Act, also referred to as the Hart-Seller Act. 70% of Americans, based on multiple polls at the time, were in favor of changing up the way that we did immigration. And it also had bipartisan support in Congress. So, yeah, everybody in America was for this change. Yes, it did. I can read you some quotes about the Hart-Seller Act from the men who passed it, by the way. How about that? Okay, see about sure, go what for it. They were thinking about. Now let me look this up here for one. Yeah, second you can there. read me all the quotes you want, my dude. Even Dixiecrats voted for that bill. I mean, you're not going to find. There was no grand conspiracy. The majority of Americans and bipartisan support in Congress got it passed, dog. There was no grand conspiracy here. They lied to. Who was who lied? lied to. How were they bill. lied? How were they lied okay, to? I'm gonna quote. Okay. I'm quoting Senator Ed Ed Kennedy. Ed Kennedy mm-hmm. was one of the crafters of the bill. Yep. Okay, out of deference to the critics, I want to comment on what the bill will not do. Okay. First, our cities will not be flooded with million immigrants annually. Um, we've taken about um, 3 million immigrants in this country per year, right? So that's that's wrong right there, first and foremost. Okay, secondly, under the proposed bill, the present level of immigration remains substantially the same. Okay, that's obviously ridiculous immigration has jumped so much in the past 50 years it's completely out of any uh, uh historical uh pattern that we had ever sure. had in this country. none of these it's quotes have backed above. your initial claim up so far but go ahead important part edward kennedy democrat from massachusetts said this mm-hmm. secondly the ethnic mix of this country will not be upset okay obviously is that yep. so they, these are men who literally said Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 hold on. Your initial claim was that they lied about it. Do you have a quote in here showing me somewhere that he knew what the impact was going to be of that immigration bill? Or are you totally pulling that out your ass? This was one of the crafters of the bill, and he was saying it will not mix the, it will not change the ethnic mix of the country. Can you prove to me that he thought it would? I'll complete the quote. Contrary to the charges in some quarters, S-500, the bill's name, will not inundate America with immigrants from any one country or area or the most populated and economically deprived nations of Africa and Asia. Well, actually, it obviously has because the majority of our immigrants are Hispanic. Can you prove that they knew that at the time? Because your initial claim was that they lied when they sold the bill. This was his belief at the time. This is what was coming out about the bill to the American public. They were saying this was a stopgap to basically correct historical racial ills. This is this. They they claimed at the very least that this would not change the ethnic mix of this country. And, and can you prove that has. they knew that it was going to? Because you said they lied about it. How do you know they weren't just mistaken? I, I don't think that they did. Okay, fine. I, I can rescind okay, that. Okay, well, well, oh, if you don't think they did, then they didn't. Then what are we arguing about? Yeah, the 1965 immigration bill passed. Nobody thought that it would have the impact it did. It obviously had a much different impact than a lot of people thought it would. Why are we talking about it? So because that was the point where our immigration policy got so out of whack that it's going to change this country forever. Sure, it, cha- it changed, yeah, the, the composition of people. The what? at the time does not mean it's not having the effect that it is i never claimed about i never said anything about the effects of it you're the one that initially you claimed think that, that it's a, you think it's a perfectly acceptable act because the people supported it back then in 1972 or i mean excuse me 1964 i mean that's kind of how our system works yeah I, it's a democratic republic the people supported yeah, it they elected a fucking liberal bill here but i hear this a lot too what about slavery we thought slavery was acceptable at one point yeah I mean, it was, was and then we changed that 90. too i mean what yes, about it and now i've changed and i think and many many people have changed their view of this bill Okay, well, try, I guess your goal then is to elect a, a person to change the Immigration Act then, I guess. Which we did. <laughs> Why? He hasn't done it yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. You're oh, in for God. a bad surprise if you think Trump is getting any comprehensive immigration reform through through Congress. But, I mean, good luck, my dude. Trump's the fucking... He's a... He's a just a... a he's, he basically stole Pat Buchanan's entire election platform, and that's how he won. Is he basically took Pat Buchanan said 20 years beforehand... And he mo- I mean, mimicked him, essentially, and Steve Bannon knew it. Steve Bannon was the one who orchestrated that entire campaign. So, I mean, I don't love Trump, but at least somebody was talking about immigration. That's why Trump won. That's exactly the reason Trump won. Okay. Uh, so so we've dropped the original claim that they lied to pass that act, right? That was just a big meme, right? Is that is that a Jared Taylor thing? Does he say that a lot? Because I've heard that claim from so other I people as well. I lied to the American public. I definitely. Yeah, but you have absolutely that. no proof of that. You just believe that based on your own gut feeling. Their statements at the time. But, but you can't prove that they were making those statements at the time maliciously. There's no evidence Hart, of that. Was, Senator Philip Hart, whose name is on the bill, the Hart Seller yeah. Act, right? Uh-huh. The notion was created that somehow or another, 190 million people, which was the population in 1965, mm-hmm. are going to be swallowed up. None of us would want that. 
This bill does not seek to do it, and this bill could not do it. Okay. Do One you have day, any proof that he misled people it. intentionally on that? Pull apart a liar. I'm saying that he didn't know what the bill was going to do, and the bill has had disastrous consequences. Oh, okay. So we can argue that we didn't know what the bill was going to do. I'm okay with that, yeah. For sure. Nobody at the time knew how dramatically it would impact the, the American demographics, but they didn't intentionally lie to the American public, and nobody was misled, and nobody was malicious about the passing of the legislation in 1965. Malicious, exactly. Not, not intentional, not malicious. Still a lie. Okay. Wait, how is it a lie? Wait, okay, let's say that I let's say that I tell my friends I'm going to drive us to the bar and I'm not going to get in an accident, and then I drive and then some guy T-bones me or something, or something fucks up and I do. Does that mean I lied? Like, It's really weird. But you still lied. <laughs> Wait, so you would consider that a lie? Or like let's say um let's say that I tell like um I tell uh, like a kid or something like oh I'll go pick you up from school at 4 p.m. and then I get into a car or like my car breaks down or something, right? And I'm not able to get there. Would you say that, oh well you lied when you said you were coming at 4 p.m.? Is that a lie? When say you, you implied there was some malice in it in, in your tone of voice. I mean, it's not a malicious lie. I mean, it's a lie that that in retrospect you were incorrect about. And that, Do you and not so agree you, that you, the term lie carries with it malintent? Like, do you... well, I disagree with that. I think if you make a claim that later turns out to not be true, then you are incorrect, which means that your claim was fallacious. It was a lie. So incorrect and lie are the same. I'm just trying to get the words correct. So to you, being incorrect There's and lying are the same thing. You you recognize that nobody else I mean, like really you... uses it that way, right? Like if you were to hand in a math assignment and you were wrong on like questions four, five, and six, your teacher wouldn't say, why did you lie on four, five, and six or something weird like that, right? Or Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's a, a ref looking back on it at the statements, they were clearly incorrect. Okay, I'm not trying to assign malice so to Philip Hart. So you're lying to, to me right now. Hold on. You're lying to me, and I don't appreciate it, okay? You were trying to assign malice. That was the point of your quote mining that you just did, okay? Because you don't fully understand how the 1965 Act. You were trying to say that there was some subverse. What? Yeah, I understand it better than you. No, do. you don't. You really don't. Do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why it was changed? That first provision to make it um, so that one of the most important reasons was so that families of people could could immigrate here, and how that ended up being like one of the the worst parts of it in terms of changing the demographic composition. That particular thing that was put in, the reason why that provision was changed was actually to apply, uh, or was actually to bring over the more racist people like you, because the idea was the only way that they could get um, part of the the racist Democrats, the Dixiecrats, part of the reasons why they could get them on board is because they made it so one of the most important things to bring over family members because most of the people in America were white at that point in time. They thought that if they changed it so that mainly family members were given preferential treatment, more white people would come over. But that first provision that got put in ended up being one of the big reasons why so many other types of people came over because people would immigrate and then bring their families. So that concession that was made, that was actually made to keep it majority white and it ended up having the opposite effect. It was totally unintentional. Okay, then I am willing to concede then that they that I was incorrect. I lied then, sir. I was you wrong. didn't lie to I, me. Well, or I don't think you lied to me. You were just incorrect. Okay, I'm willing to concede the point that I was incorrect that they were maliciously lying. Wrong, and that's why the American public supported it. The American public, as you just conceded, they put in that that clause essentially to make it the country. Uh, keep the cultural... No, uh, careful. It wasn't to appease the entire American public. It was to appease the more racist people in America, particularly the Dixiecrats, was to bring them on board with the bill. At the time when the American public was polled, 70% of Americans said that they favored things other than country of origin when it came time to bring immigrants over to this country. So there was not this prevailing American opinion, and I can link you the polls if you want, because I just had a debate about this with Nick Fuentes. There was not this prevailing opinion at the time that the country needs to stay majority white or only white people can immigrate over. There were two major polls that went around at the time. One was by Gallup and the other was by another organization. And 70% of Americans favored other qualifying factors to get here over um, country of origin. Yes, but I mean, if they had known what the effects of the bill were going to be, I guarantee they wouldn't have pat allowed, they wouldn't have supported it. Well, we guarantee. don't have a time Absolutely. machine, and neither of us here are clairvoyant, so. This is going to be something that we're just not going to see eye to eye on, personally. Yeah, so. I mean, I only have facts and polling data to go by my point, so I, I can't really, yeah. I also have facts and polling data. I also have these, I mean, these are What facts or polling mouth. data do you have that indicate that Americans at the time wanted to see the country remain majority white? Hello? I think that it's it's racist to want a country that is 
primarily one culture, primarily one race. Yeah, I think it's dumb. I don't know why oh, it's such okay. a big deal. Vast majority of the rest of the world has immigration. Policy. I don't care about the vast majority of the rest of the world. I'm an American citizen, and I care about the country of the United States of America. I don't care what Japan does with their immigration. I don't care what Israel does. I know you like to throw those two countries out there. I don't give a fuck about either of those countries. I'm not Japanese, and I'm not a Jewish. I'm not Israeli. I care about the United States of America. I'm going to bring up Brazil, because that's our future. I don't care We're about Brazil either. I don't think the United States is going to turn into Brazil anytime soon. About it? <laughs> I mean, that's, you know... What indications stuff. do you have in the United States right now that we're headed towards Brazil? What part of the... What, what, what economic indicator or what policy do you think is moving us in Brazil's direction? Well, I mean, as the country moves further and further to the left, as, which happens through Hispanic immigration, that's the only reason that this country is... It doesn't happen through Hispanic immigration. It happens through the constitutional it's process of naturalizing citizens. They're American citizens, whether they're Hispanic or not. As much as you want the United States to and remain majority white... through immigration policy. Sure. That's in, that, that we have the right to do in the United States. You might disagree with that. That's fine. But you're going to have to find how to change the Constitution to do that or whatever. Like, that's... I, your issue there is with the, the founding fathers. Just change that bill. I mean, we didn't change the Constitution. Constitution when we passed the 1965 Hard Seller Act. No, but the Constitution, inside the Constitution, there's nothing in there saying only white people can be brought over or only conservatives can be you brought over to vote. You policy set up by the men who wrote the Constitution that kept it majority white for 190 years, and Too, I have to oh, think man. That they, knew what they were doing. Too bad they didn't specify in any of the Constitution that it should have been kept majority white, huh? Oof. Actually, I mean, they didn't also specify in the Constitution that, you know, for instance, slaves couldn't vote, but that was part of the Constitution. Oof, if only we had a way to change the Constitution, maybe an amendment process where a court of judges could decide on whether or not we want to change the way that we interpret really, the law. I mean, <laughs> it's not, I mean, it, it, I, I mean, I don't, if you want to change it so that only like conservative people are allowed to be brought over here, white people, are, that's fine. But what you're talking about is not constitutional at the moment. You need a constitutional amendment to do that. Saying it's viable at all. It's not viable. Well, then I guess we're move on to the next point because it's, it's not specified. The federal government doesn't have the power to regulate our immigration in that way. That's why it's a, it's a power delegated to Congress. We don't regulate it based on race. I mean... They do, but they need the people's support, though, and the people's support is going to be less and less for in favor of a, of a, a, a culturally or racially central centered immigration policy the more people of different races or cultures come into the United States which is something that, you know, the Democrats have supported for the last 40 years because it helps them win elections, so. Damn, maybe conservatives should have found a better marketing technique then. I don't know. You need to actually change everything about conservatism to do that then because we would need to make it big government conservatism. That's where these people are coming from countries. Every single cent Central American and Mexico, which is not in Central America, obviously, all of these countries are very, very large government states. I mean, the government provides for the vast majority I mean, excuse me, I'm, I'm not I'm saying that incorrectly. The government is a much larger part of their lives in, in those countries. So they're coming from big government cultures, and they're coming to our culture and supporting big government policies. I mean, it's not rocket science. I mean, Republicans want to expand. If they're not Republicans, Republicans want to expand the prison system. They want to maintain the illegality of... That's why. You honestly think... What? They're not voting Republican because the Republicans are racist. I mean, it has nothing to do with. I'm just saying the idea that Republicans are in favor of a small government is hilarious. You want to expand military funding constantly. They want to expand federal prisons and all sorts of state prisons idea, constantly. Though. They want to maintain the illegality um, of of all sorts of different drugs that probably shouldn't be illegal. They want to police your life in a number of moral ways. What? I support drug legalization. I am. Oh, that's fine if you are. That's that's fine. But conservatives and Republicans in general are not. They're very Republicans pro. Republicans aren't conservatives in, in many cases. But the neocons, I would not consider to be actual conservatives. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, whatever political party you're talking about doesn't seem to exist in any votable form right now in America. So I'm not sure why you would expect anybody really coming does. over to vote for him. It certainly does. I mean, the, the wait, which party are you talking about? Because I was talking about the Republicans and the Democrats. Those are the only two major parties I'm aware of the existence of. Neocons are dead politically. I mean, they're they're completely. I mean, a, a forgotten political race at this. I point. mean, they seem to be keeping Trump from getting any of his agenda done. From getting elected, I mean, they they're still a humongous part of Washington. Yeah, that's absolutely accurate. Gotcha. I mean, I, if you're talking, this is all to me. I'm, I'm not saying that my beliefs are are going to take place anytime soon, or that they're viable in in modern America. No, I mean, I'm not. Not at all. Well, I'm curious, I mean, what policies are, in what direct way is America moving towards the direction of being like Brazil? Can you give me an example of a policy or something that's moving us closer in that direction? See. <laughs> I mean, it, we're, we're going, the, 
the United States is going to be a minority majority country by 2050. Okay, what does that have to do with becoming more like Brazil? Who cares if white people are are not a a plurality? What? Brazil is a minority majority country. The most culturally diverse country, a major country at the very least there is. Okay, so we're going to turn into Brazil because our demographics might artificially match theirs a little bit? Can you give me something better than that? Demographic, that's what that's how we're going to be like brazil because we're not going to have a single demographic that's going to have majority so as soon uh, as we lose the majority of white people the government is going to collapse welfare is going to explode out of control did you seriously fucking debate with everybody like this i mean did i say the government was going to collapse i mean well you keep saying that we're going to turn into brazil and i'm trying to ask i'm trying to ask how are we going to turn into brazil and you're like well the the demographics are going to change uh who the fuck cares if the demographics change how are we going to turn into brazil i do i give a shit that the demographics why Move to a white neighborhood. Why do you care so much? Of LA, for instance, go I mean, the country. LA, 60, 70 years ago, was vast majority white. You could, East LA was white culture everywhere you fucking went. Movie theaters on the blocks and fucking golf courses and everything. Go to East LA now. It's ninety nine percent Hispanic. And guess what? Who the, the fuck cares? Then just don't go to that part of LA. Who the fuck cares? Why is it a big deal to you? I don't want to cede portions of my country. It's not, first of all, portions of your country. You haven't done fuck all for the country yet. I don't think you're a veteran, and it doesn't sound like you're a large businessman or anybody that's contributed to So it's not yeah, your country. Get co- back to the fucking Zerg rush, dude. Seriously. What? I mean, this is amazingly fucking hypocritical. It's not know. hypocritical. Dude, I pay more in taxes to you, and you're trying to claim some kind of ownership of the country. Oh like, you can God. tell everybody else that they're not allowed to be here? Why? I want to go to East LA and see all white people. Who the fuck well, cares if they're white here. people or not? I'm saying we need to have sensible immigration policy. Like, yeah, but you haven't made any sense of it. <laughs> We sensible immigration policy. Okay, look, I'm gonna quote Jason Richwine here. Do you know who Jason Richwine is? He no, probably another is. white nationalist. Who is he? Oh uh, yeah. Well, if you believe a lot of the fucking left wing rags, he is. Yeah, certainly. But Jason Richwine, on um, here. Hey, Best known for his controversial here. views on immigration and IQ. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hit me up with his quotes. Very controversial. D. <laughs> that. Uh. Uh. Hang on. Let me. Let me. Get the exact wording here. It was about IQ and immigration policy. Mm-hmm. It was basically showing how school dropout rates, among things. I mean, there are also things like uh, uh, just. I mean, his, his argument was IQ. I don't think IQ is as much of an important uh, uh, measure of intelligence, personally. But I mean, if you look at school dropout rates, if you look at college graduation rates, in, in places that have high immigrant populations, they have far lower qualities of measures of success in these intelligence uh, rankings i mean uh yeah I, yeah i don't deny that sounds like a problem we got to work on sure problem for ourselves what why are we creating this problem for ourselves because it's part of building a bigger better country because there are benefits to immigrants what is this bigger better country why did we need a bigger better country i like well we i mean we were, we're I, I agree that the 50s and 60s weren't great for, you know, black people or gay people, and I think that's wrong. And I think the civil rights movement made great, I, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, um, steps into creating their own parts of modern American culture and being accepted by the larger culture. I don't see why we need to go inviting the rest of the world here, though. I, don't, I, 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 just, I mean, if I, you want to make economic sacrifices, that's on you, but you're going to have to stand in the face of, I guess, Americans that don't agree with that? Like... I, I, I don't know. I want the country to be better. I, I, do I agree with me. What? Really, many Americans do agree with me. I, I don't know about this extreme of a view, but yeah, I'm sure there are some that agree with you. Sure. I mean, what what is what's the extreme view that I'm holding? I'm wondering that we shouldn't let brown or black people come to the country and only white people should be allowed. I said we should favor whites, though. We should favor whites and high skilled immigrant immigrants. I mean, the, that's the other part of this that we're not really talking about is the fact that the vast majority of Central American immigrants are low skilled. I mean, if you if you're in fa- I'm in favor of Asian immigration, I'm in favor of Indian doctors and engineers. What's wrong? Here, wait, certainly. what's wrong with low skill immigration? Do you hate business? Do you hate businesses in America? Do you not want low skill labor to exist? Bringing in cheap labor that we have to fucking deal with. Yes, yeah, certainly. Cheap labor that we do. Yeah, that's a, that's labor is a resource. Why do you hate small the businesses? Labor that helps their bottom lines. Okay, so you hate businesses? You don't want to help business bottom lines? You, you, if you don't, don't like business, don't that's fine. But earlier you said you were in favor of small government. Now you sound like you want to artificially raise wages on, on, on bottom floor workers. I mean, which is it? 
the same fucking gish galloping bullshit that you do in every other fuck. This is why I didn't want okay. to come on. Okay, I'm sorry, my bad. Stuff. Let me, like, okay, my bad. I admit that was my mistake. Let me slow down a little bit, okay? So you said earlier that you were in favor of small government, okay? I extrapolated from that, maybe unfairly, that you were pro capitalism. Yes. You were pro capitalism and pro business. That is unfairly. Okay, so you're not pro capitalism or pro business. Oh. That's not what I said. I am pro capitalism. I am pro business. Okay, but I'm okay. not. So I, if... listen to me fucking explain the fucking point. I am. That is not my main focus. I'm not zeroed in thinking we just got to make sure that the fucking bottom line for Walgreens is at, at as high as it fucking can be. That we need the Dow to be as high as the goddamn can be. That's not my main interest. That okay. doesn't mean I'm anti capitalism. Well, it sounds like you don't really care much about, like, that's kind of like a side issue then for them. You're not like a big capitalist or like I care a big. About. Here's what I care about. Here's what I care about when it comes to immigration. Okay. Unemployment and mm -hmm. native wages. Native wages decrease with with uh low skilled immigration coming here so native wages barely decrease it only impacts a very no 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 black teen unemployment is 56 percent in the united states black teen unemployment that doesn't just mean all black teens that means black teens who are searching for a job 56 percent of them cannot get a job and all of those right? jobs that they're that looking for are being taken by immigrants i mean it's it's definitely a humongous chunk of it it is without a doubt a humongous chunk of it is because those low skilled jobs that require very little education are already being done by people who have come here from Guatemala and from Central America and from El Salvador. So in every study that I've ever that seen I've ever in my seen. entire life, the impact on native wages has always been like in the ballpark of two to 3% for high school dropouts. Those are the only people that are negatively disproportionately impacted by immigration. So. Uh, this idea that 56% or whatever of black men are unemployed because, you know, because Pedro and Juan are coming over from Mexico and taking their jobs, is that founded yes. in any sort of data anywhere? It absolutely is. I'll, I'll get the fucking study for you right now. There's a study done by Cornell University. Um, this is impact of illegal immigration, which is obviously mostly Central Amer American cool. immigration. Well, we, well, that sucks because we're not talking about illegal immigration. So talk to me about legal immigration. I'm not, in favor, I'm not in favor poor. of illegal immigration. So we're not really talking about that. Okay, so would you be in favor of taking every illegal immigrant out of the country? Probably I mean, not. I don't like, think that's really realistic. Good. Would you be in favor of it? No, I don't so, think I it's mean, a realistic you... solution, no. Why not? Because it's not realistic. Because rounding up 13 million people would cost a fuck ton of money. It would probably disrupt a lot of business. It'd be easier to just bring them in under the tax jobs, base and legalize. Yeah. What? jobs too create jobs for people that are looking for employment i don't think so, that yeah. so again i'm really sorry and i'm really trying not to misunderstand you but you just cited that the benefit of doing this would be to create government jobs i thought you were in favor of small government i don't like to create useless bureaucratic jobs in government i i prefer smaller government. i'm in favor of useful bureaucratic jobs and that would be a useful one. okay so you're not necessarily for small government then i don't know why you claim that if, if you would make that claim not always okay certainly not yeah, so but I mean, jo I'm job creation general. is not generally something that's cited as, as a positive thing um, for, for somebody that wants a smaller government. Creating jobs in government isn't usually something that's cited as a positive, if that's like your only positive. Uh, deporting 13 million people from the United States seems highly improbable. Um, and I don't know why you wouldn't just legalize them and bring them under the tax base. That and he destroyed, I mean, like, that's exactly what Reagan did in the 80s. He, he gave amnesty to illegal immigrants in California. That single-handedly turned California into a blue state. That, that one move by Reagan was, in my opinion, a very troubled man in many ways to really get to like. Um, that is, that's a case study right there. I mean, that's what has happened in the United States on a larger scale and what's going to happen in the future. I, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry that the Constitution lets people vote. I don't, I don't know how to respond to that. Not a pro Why do you keep bringing up? I don't have a problem with these people voting. I have a you problem clearly with the fact do, though. that they came here in the first place. Okay, and you don't like and that they, they came here because practice. you don't like because you don't want because they changed our voting practice. They changed everything about our cultural dem and our political demographics in this country. Okay, okay like, but I mean, I they're Americans. They have the right to vote how they want. Like, Americans by an act that obviously did not do what it was intended to do, and it was the oh, wrong. So it was another accident. <laughs> God, dude. Wow. <laughs> it, it, whether it's an accident or not, I mean, this is that that's what happened. 
Oh, okay. That's, I mean, so I, what's, what the future of America looks like is going to be a minority majority country. I mean, so we've seen I, it's it's not something that I'm particularly interested in having happen to my to the nation that I call home at the very least. And you still haven't been able to tell me why that bothers you so much. Prefer small government. What does small government have to do with being a majority minority? Go to a majority minority country. We'll, we, we will not be have small government. We will be we will sh further and further shift towards the left. Okay, so when your country goes from being majority minority, the country becomes more left leaning. Certainly, yes. But I mean, it, Trump won forty eight out of fifty states going by just white voters. So right? how did Trump so win? He lost all states going by non white voters. Okay. The, the, what? Why does this distinction matter, though? I don't understand. They're all Americans. Do you think that does only the future matter? So only for white people, the future should matter. The country was ninety percent white in nineteen sixty. Why was that so horrible? Well, the ninety percent seem... white country in nineteen sixty voted for Reagan. They gave amnesty to immigrants. I mean, it seems like that didn't help too much either. Yeah, they fucked up. And now the sixty percent white or whatever country voted for Trump. So I mean, it seems like your argument is kind of falling. They see the writing on the wall. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> okay. Off, buddy. Well, I, I just, it's just funny that like when we had so many white people, they fucked everything up. All the white people let in all the well, like we're the master race, my dude. We we're, we've got the highest IQs, but somehow these Hispanics came in and they outsmarted us and they got immigration reform we passed. Are, we are suicidally empathetic. White people are. That's the whole fucking. Oh. Great, this is why I laugh about fucking when, when it comes to the leftists. Where they talk well, about then evil you should be championing are. Hispanic we people. Then suicidally empathetic. Then that's we then you should be championing. Go out of our way to apologize for things in our past and we will go out of our way to make our country as welcoming as possible no other countries are doing this around the i mean exactly very very few i should say are doing this the you mean no other countries, western country majority white country in europe like germany or the united kingdom or sweden none of, none of those guys are dealing with immigration at all 0.5 million muslim migrants in three years okay that country you know those muslim migrants by the way three out of four of them are facing long-term unemployment. Now, Germany can deal with it for a, at least a certain amount of time because wow. they have an extremely efficient economic structure. You're telling me that people that but were forced from the country they live in because of absolute fucking ruin because fuck of military off, shit aren't capable of- Bullshit, dude. They weren't refugees to- uh, the, the Oh, the, you mean the, the state of Syria? Those people weren't refugees? <laughs> I'm quoting. You're quoting Breitbart, my dude. Syria is a failed fucking oh, state. Syria is a failed fucking state, my dog. You don't think any of the people leaving that country were? were... The vast majority of the migrants into Europe are not Syrian. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. They're there, you're talking about refugees in Germany. Like my bad. And they're Somali. They are Malian. They're Libyan. Gotcha. They're Egyptian. They're Pakistani. Okay are going on in these countries that we're responsible for and that we need to fucking apologize even i'll even grant you that syria uh, is in a horrible situation that we need the rest of the world does need to do something about i don't understand why that something means we need to bring them into our countries for much more refugee housing and facilities and aid by doing it in their countries or doing it in their region at the very least i mean they can go to lebanon and we can give them much more uh, I mean, the majority of the efficient. refugees and shit over there do go to the neighboring states. They don't. The majority. Yes, we, of them. It should be a higher percentage because we're taking I mean, far the, too many. Hmm. We don't compared to the percentages that those other countries around are, are taking in. Like, these aren't facing dem the demographic complete overhaul that Europe is facing because of this. I don't know why the demographics are like so important to you. Why the fuck is it important to the rest of the goddamn world then? I mean, why the fuck is it important? It just, you're the outlier here. Do you understand that? The, yeah, because I'm an American dog. Understand. I love my country. Yeah, I'm an outlier. Of course I am. My country doesn't have an, an ethnic background to it. Yeah, of course I'm an outlier. Point, no, we absolutely didn't. What do you mean? We did. No, we didn't. What the do country you... was white. No, the, the country was Anglo-Saxon, dog. What you consider white today wasn't considered white 200 fucking years ago. They didn't consider fucking Germans and Spaniards white. They... I That's great that you don't they, care, but just don't lie to me and say, well, at one point our country was white. You think that fucking the British saw or Englishmen saw themselves as the same as fucking Germans 200 years ago? The country was never white. The country was today. initially. Today. I never claimed they did. Oh, okay. I thought I heard you say like white like a million times. My bad. It, just because they were different ethnicities does not mean that they aren't the same. I mean, they are at least, okay, they aren't similar cultures, okay, that, that are far easier to blend in and coalesce into a common culture than bringing in 
of Central Americans and South Americans and Southeast Asians into the country. Okay, do you understand how it's much easier for an Englishman to move to Germany than it, and to coalesce into that culture than it is for somebody from Thailand to move into, say, Germany? It is much easier. You would I don't know. That, I right? bet you can find... I mean, it might be easier because of language shit, I guess, depending on what they spoke today. Okay. Language shit. I mean, it's also just the simple fact that, you know, they have running water for mu much of the much of the world doesn't have running water much, much of the world, of the world doesn't, doesn't have running water that's how is that possibly why are you laughing at that i don't know like you people seem to think that like africa is the same shithole that, that it was shit like outside? 50 years ago dude I, I don't know like the whole world has been no, like improving at record paces like we're, we more people are moving into like middle income um or decent income classes than have ever in the history of all of mankind but you like keep acting we like... have more impoverished people than in the history of mankind the, the population no, we... itself is increasing maybe the population is increasing but the population is sloping off in all in, in, in every country where it hasn't already oh it's left. oh my god are you kidding me dude nigeria for instance will have 450 million people by 2050. nigeria a country that still is dealing with Boko Haram dominating much of their country. I mean, that is not a stable country at all. Their country is going to be larger than the United States within the next 30, 40 years. Major demographic problems for the rest of the world. Okay, that's the European... If you think this is a momentary migrant, migrant crisis in Europe, this is never going to end. I don't see that there's no reason why this migrant crisis, quote unquote, is ever going to have a resolution. Hold on. I just want to look up the uh, birth rate of Nigeria. Give me a second. I don't know, my dude. The birth rate of Nigeria seems like it's falling. Not quite as quickly as the yes, other African countries, but... Falling. Okay, yes. The, I will concede that the birth rate is falling. It is still growing as a country, though, because the the... the, the the thing is okay, but you understand so that when birth rates fall to a certain point, the country stops growing, right? Do you... This is according to the UN. This is a CNN article by Yamisi Adegoke from June 25th, 2017. According to the UN, half of the world's population growth is likely to occur in Africa. Yeah, because they've still got the if highest... I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Africa is the most impoverished of all of the continents with the exception of like Antarctica, Sure, but right? it's been making quick strides so, okay, so towards the reaching the first world. People the most poor people in the world are the ones that are procreating the most, right? So that would definitely indicate that poverty is growing across the world. No. You claim these people no, are immediately what? being jumped That's... into the fucking middle class. That's Hold ridiculous. on. I'm sorry. This is like That's a, it's like a, it's, like a, it's, ca it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's kind of like a calculus question, okay? So the poorest people typically give birth to the most people everywhere. That's true in Western countries. That's been true typically in all of human history, okay? But we're not concerned with whether the countries are growing. We're concerned with whether the growth of of the countries is slowing down. So our African countries- No, we're, we're concerned with the population of those countries and how large it's getting. I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's... what we hope is that the growth eventually slows down to the point to where they start to reach replacement like we have in the entire Western world, like what every single country does when it reaches a certain level. Yes, I mean, they've been far above the replacement rate for a long time. Yeah, but they've it's... been falling like massively over the past 20 or 30 years. Most African countries Nigeria, have. This... Yeah, with an estimated population. Yeah, some of the sub-Saharan than... ones are like really fucked, sure. But most of the African countries have been falling dramatically. Why wouldn't you expect that trend to continue? I'd like a source for that. <laughs> okay, my dude, give me a second. Hold on. At the end of the day, the fact of the matter is that Africa is getting larger and it's not getting any uh, better off. And we're going to have to deal with more and more immigrants what, to knocking on our doors into the Western world for the as far as the, as we can see. I mean, there's no reason to think that the immigration rate into Europe is ever going to slow down within our lifetimes. Well, unfortunately, that's just not true. Problem for us. Okay. That's this is an average problem. of sub-Sahara Africa. This is the worst of Africa. And you can see that the birth rates have fallen pretty dramatically over the past 35 years. Are they still pretty high? Sure. But again, these are the literal worst parts of Africa. We can find a ton of other countries in Africa that have gotten even more amazing with their birth rates. Give me a second, and I can link you those memes as well. I mean, Hold on. Because they were going from far smaller countries like 100, 200 years ago, where they were actually comparable to Europe or to North America. But then, I mean, the, the, the massive population growth in the last hundred years 
It, I mean, yeah. Whoa, whoa, you keep saying massive change. population growth. Mass population growth has slowed. Humongous for so long that the modern slowing of, of, the, of demographics really doesn't change much because it's still growing at such a rate and the population is so much higher now than it was back then when the rate was a lot higher. But e but eventually it will yeah some of the countries will be large it's just the nature of being a huge country but eventually the birth rates will reach a, a point to where the populations will cease when to it grow. Does reach that, what replacement rate? What do you think is going to happen when it does reach that replacement rate? They're not going to stop coming into Europe. They're not going to stop demanding access into the rest of into successful. No, of course nations. they'll have access to the rest of the world. That's why countries like China, the people that you were sucking off earlier, are so keen to work with people in Africa. China has a lot of education programs where yeah. they bring Africans over and they work with them because China recognizes that Africa will be a major player on the world consumer stage in 10 or 20 years, and they want to get their hands in yeah. early work with them not to invite them into their nation work with them or invite them in it doesn't Probably. matter the end result is it's the whatever African population in china and china would never allow african africans to to be a significant portion of their country they never okay would. maybe they would maybe they wouldn't but i mean i don't really care it's china not maybe it's not maybe they well i i really don't care I, I i don't care what china's policies are i'm not in favor of eugenics i'm not in favor of socialism and i'm an american i'm not necessarily in favor of eugenics either but i did I, I brought it up to at the first point to show that they understand race and they understand things like I mean, maybe not. And race they also in understand terms. things like socialism. I don't really give a fuck though. I'm not a socialist and I don't yeah, care about they, eugenics. They probably fucking uh, they probably understand eating noodles too and fucking so, I, it, it's that's irrelevant. I okay, mean, wait. So up, why not just go move to China? Like paint yourself yellow and go fucking live with those dudes or some shit. Fuck, cause I, this is oh, God. Wow. Well, why why don't the South Africans just move out of fucking? I mean, uh, why don't just the Boers move out of South Africa? Oh, because it's they created the culture there and they'd like to protect it. Maybe. God damn, dude. I well, why do you want to protect your culture so much? You never really answered hey, first this. First and foremost, let me say this: that I couldn't move to China if I wanted to because they don't generally allow. I mean, they don't have the lax immigration policy. Well, that's why I said paint yourself yellow. <laughs> Maybe you could trick them into thinking you're one of them, dude. You seem to like China a lot. I mean, you're nationalistic as fuck about their Respect country. Their policy on certain things, certainly, absolutely. <laughs> Why does it bother you so much if like brown people live in the U.S.? So you, so we go back to. That. I'm curious. I, about... I don't. I don't have a problem with brown. I don't, for instance, well, LA, I you said you're like L.A. There's some parts that are like 99 percent Hispanic. Like, why does that bother you so much? Why do you tone care of so voice much? Too. Yes, it was that exact tone of voice. Um, well, you said it. No, well, I'm sorry. I like, if you go to some parts of L.A., if you go into some of them, they're 99 percent Hispanic. I, that was like the tone of voice. It is 99 percent Hispanic. It was not 99. And, and the, the test scores have dropped. The schools have gotten worse. The tax base has dropped and the whites left. I mean, that's what's going to happen. That's what happened in Detroit. That's what happened in Chicago. That's what happened in St. Louis, Baltimore, Milwaukee. I mean, the, it, the list goes on and on and on and on. That yeah, sure. Yeah, there are definitely problems in the country that we need to work on. Sure. But you're ignoring all of the benefits as well. And you only well, focus on the problems. A lot of those problems are caused by diversity. Okay? Yeah, the but there are a lot of benefits given by diversity as well. I mean, what what's the point? And I don't think those benefits are, are it, those benefits are going to be, are still at the moment, in my opinion, outweighed by the negatives. But well, but the be benefits proud. are tangible economic benefits and the negatives are, I don't like brown people here because they scare me. So, I mean, how, yeah, how would you bring some? I don't like brown people shit, dude. I mean, seriously, I did, I told you that I respect a lot of things about black culture. I love the fucking NBA. I listen to rap. I, I don't, I love Thomas Sowell. I read fucking, I I read W.E.B. Du Bois. I read Zora Neale Hurston. I mean, I... I okay, so I if you like brown like people... So, okay, I'm sorry. We love brown people now. My bad. So if you love brown people so much, why fucking, wouldn't... Fucking... This... You fucking dishonest piece of shit keeps saying that I just don't like brown people. That's the reason that I don't support massive immigration policy. You're the one being fucking dishonest here, dude. Okay, if you really love brown people, okay, because now this, now we love brown oh people, okay. God. If you really love brown people, why wouldn't your goal be to improve their living conditions here rather than say, well, they've got some problems, get them all out of here? I would love to improve their living conditions. We've tried doing it for a very long time. It's not happening. For a, a lot of great success. dog, 1960. Okay, Jim Crow laws. How can you say a very long time? There are black people alive today no. that lived under Jim Crow. What are you talking about? Yes, that is a horrible travesty. But the problems in the black community today are not the cause of Jim, Jim Crow, largely. How, how can you say that? Black people today have grandparents that were impacted by state and forced segregation. Yes, that's horrible. But the problems in the black community today are not caused from state and forced segregation. How can you know that? Because we see the problems pretty quite clearly. Wh like seventy-two percent of black children are born out of a wedlock. I mean, that's a. I mean, that's awful for the black children that are and born no out of wedlock. And no sociologist, nobody would ever say something like, wow, I wonder if all of these problems in the family structure might be tied back to the living situation of black people, and it might be tied back to things like generational wealth or the proclivities of your parents that were living under state-enforced segregation. Like, You think that it, in one generation, all of those problems just disappear? 
fun. Under state enforced segregation, the uh, uh, illegitimacy rate for blacks was similar to whites. Yeah, sure. It's and when you numbers. breed cows, you can control their illegitimacy rate as well. No shit. With more freedom comes more problems. Of course, you have to manage it. Why do you think a lot of women are unhappy today compared to where they were? It's a lot more difficult to be like a functional person in, in society that has to make a lot of decisions instead of being a literal fucking slave. But that's one of the trade-offs that we make for freedom. Then it's more accurately said then, right, that the causes of black illegitimacy have more to do with the civil rights movement than they do segregation sure right? to some extent yeah sure exactly are we supposed to solve the illegitimacy rate in the black community because it's only getting worse i mean what are we supposed to do uh, exactly? black, the black family situation has been improving steadily over the past i think it's like 15 that years that is a fucking joke if you think that i mean it, the, the illegitimacy rate continues to get worse each year 57 percent of black children live in a single mother household with very with either very little or no contact with the biological father that's gotten worse and worse as the years have gone on have much higher i mean like crime in general has gone down in this country over the last 60 70 years but in inner cities in the last five years it's gone up uh violent crime has gone up in in many cases largely i mean st louis chicago baltimore milwaukee dc detroit those cities over Russell, inter based, I mean, God, uh, uh, no violent years. crime has skyrocketed in many in many cases okay so why not like fix these problems why is your solution like kick all of them out well, again, you're completely straw manning me. I never claim to kick them all out. In fact, by the way, I think that blacks have a, as much right to an American culture as whites do. In fact, maybe even more. I mean, it's it's a moral sin that we brought them here. Slavery was the, one of the worst things we've ever done as a country, if not the worst. Um, it's something that we absolutely have to correct for. I'm struggling to see how, what we can do to really correct it that can't come from inside that community. That community really has to solve its own problems. Why is the black community the way that it is? Of the illegitimacy rate for one thing i mean why is the illegitimacy rate the rate that it is i have to ask black people i think white people are going around holding a gun to black people's heads saying have a kid before you get married i don't think that's happening okay so you don't think that anything in the in the past could have contributed to the black situation being the way it is now that in one generation I don't, I don't see they could just get rid of all the problems that they had as an entire community in the U.S. They should have just gotten rid of all of it in one generation. It's something they got to work towards, but it's not getting any better, though. That's the problem. Okay. That's, I mean, like, you know, I didn't think we'd come in here talking about, you know, the... I mean, that is generally Well, just something... like, it's like, it's really mind-blowing to me that, like, generational wealth and things are so important. Like, they're huge indicators of success, and they have a lot to do with a child's... Um, like success and whatnot. So it's just kind of crazy that somebody would say that like the fact that your grandparent w lived under state enforced segregation should have no impact on your life today. Like that's like an incredibly retarded claim to make. No, I don't, I never said that. I said that it's not the cause of most of the problems in the black community though. That's yeah, that's, what I you just rephrased what I said, that the problems that exist today in the black community have nothing to do with state enforced segregation from 50, 60 years ago. Yes. By that, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty insane claim to make when so much of the success of a family can be traced back to, you know, like earlier generations. Successful under segregation, then. I mean... Successful in, in, in different measures. You know, legitimate children. I mean... It, it, the you know, like there, not having, like, the freedom to be treated as a normal American citizen? <laughs> I mean, like... Yeah, what? But I, again, it's not the cause of black poverty in inner cities... Currently, the, I mean, 48.5% of all single mother households are impoverished. So children that are growing up in single mother households, one in two will be impoverished in this country. That's true for blacks and whites. That's the, it's the exact same rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, blacks are three times as likely to be in that situation. Really the crux of the issue, in my opinion. I mean, if you're not going to solve that, and I don't honestly see how we can solve it. Because like, what are we going to, I mean, I don't see how I can solve it. I don't see how. I don't know, free contraception available to people in certain neighborhoods. For, I mean, the education in schools for sexual education and whatnot. Like a lot of things push that red states cost? push against. Wait, what? How much does a condom cost? Um, I don't know enough. Yeah, that... condom, condoms too. Condoms suck. What about birth control? How about the pill? I, it's i'm in favor of the pill as well i mean that's got to be something that we have to provide for people as a governor yeah sure first of all how is that going to look that we're honestly 
the, the reason that we're putting oh, so we're, we're going to specifically give it to the black community then we can give it to poor communities it'll mainly affect black people sure what's wrong with giving them a choice on controlling their future for having children or whatever choice that they can make them i i don't see why they are inclined to a certain no, amount of people's paychecks at the end of the day well, they're going to get it one way or another because if that kid goes to jail, you're paying for it. If that kid leeches off the system and has another kid, you're paying for it. If that kid is on welfare, you're paying for it. If the mom's collecting WIC, you're paying for it. Why not just pay for a birth control pill instead of having to pay for a, a kid born out we of have wedlock? To, we have to subsidize bad decisions in the black community now? You're not subsidizing bad decisions. You're subsidizing the decisions that every single human makes. But poor people pay for it more than wealthy people do. More likely to make those decisions, which you know, keeps up the cycle of poverty. That's you don't think that happens. kids in white high schools fuck a lot and get people pregnant? You don't think they have access they to birth, con birth control? <laughs> yeah, exactly, because their parents can afford it. You think yeah, a 16-year-old I mean, I mean, chick in high school is working a job to buy her fucking birth control? I totally think a lot of them are, yeah. You think the average white girl in high school bu buys her own birth control? How much... Uh, th hold on one second. How much does the pill cost per year? I'm not a female. I honestly don't know. I've never used it. I, it's like, so, I think the average is like 600 a year. It's like 50 a month. Anywhere from 20 to 50 a month. It depends. We do give contraception to the black community and i mean it, free conception i did it, it's there's still no reason to think that that it's going to have that much of a change in the illegitimacy rate because that's a decision to go through with the pregnancy first of all and did i mean, i'm absolutely in favor of pro-choice movements as well i, I mean in places it, where we've made contraception more freely available things like teen uh birth rates and everything seem to have fallen pretty dramatically so i don't know why we would assume it wouldn't work if given um, to it's pork. Illegitimate birth rates. what the problem it's not Un only unplanned teen pregnancies i'm sorry teen illegitimate whatever unplanned birth rates or unplanned pregnancies right this guy is a moron look at generational home land five, ownership our government policies have birth control pills I, ruined I just, blocks for generations condoms work 99 percent of the time you condoms are shit free. though dog nobody wants to use condoms they fucking suck that means i have to subsidize your ability for your penis to feel better going to a vagina i just don't No, I, you don't have to you could subsidize the birth of the kid and him going to jail or having more kids if you want to do that instead twerking what twerking twerking i mean you know they're making the bad decisions themselves i mean I'm, i'll subsidize their bad decisions well sure. but the difference is uh, the the difference is that rich people can make bad decisions and pay very little but when poor people make bad decisions they oftentimes have to pay a much greater cost for it Part of, I mean, that's, that's, the world's not fair. What do you want me to say? Well, we do our best to make it fair, don't we? Isn't that the point of living in like a civilized not, society? You don't hunt for your own food, no. right? You buy it be because somebody else raised it for you and, and cut it up and gave it to you. Why wouldn't we try to make our poorer people better off? Point is to create a, a system that we all have equal opportunity, not, the, not equal outcome. Nobody's talking about equal right. outcome. Do you think you have equal opportunity if your mistakes hurt you more than somebody else making the exact same mistake you do? I mean, it, it's it's not generally the same mistake. It's so it's such a higher level within the black community that you can't just say that this is due to birth control being not as prevalent in the community. You think black people it's, are it's more like predisposed level. towards having children than white people, or? It seems like. <laughs> gotcha. I would be interested to see like the. I guess like the biological. So what's your, you're, you're, you on, do you honestly think that if we give birth control to a single black woman free of charge that this is going to solve this problem? No, I, it's a very, very complicated problem. That's why people like you oftentimes don't yes. like the solutions. It's, it's a very multi-leveled thing. You have to start with the family. The family is very important. So finding out how to reduce illegitimate birth is really fucking important. How do you do that? I don't know. Free access to contraception is a baseline thing. Good sexual education in school is another important thing. But good sex education in schools require good schools. So you need a greater investment in education. You also need investment. Thing, like This whole a, bullshit about good schools versus bad schools. They, you put it. You put a, a, a high IQ kid in a bad school, they'll get into Harvard and they'll do it with an easier path, by the way. Good schools versus bad schools, it's, it's, it's generally more about good students versus bad students than good schools versus bad schools. Yeah, but and that good was proven students. by the case. That was proven by, by many studies that have been done, but there was a very infamous study done in 1999 by the Cato Institute in Kansas City, Missouri, where they essentially elevated 
a, a number of different black schools, uh, the entire inner city district in Kansas City. They gave them the best education that money could buy, literally the highest per capita uh, uh, cost of spending on education in, in the entire in the entire country. And they were given the best teachers. They were given a full size, you know, Olympic size swimming pools. They were given athletic departments that uh, any uh, white suburban school would be envious of. And it did nothing. It literally did nothing over the course of the study. And the study was done over the course of 10, 15 years. It is the home situation for these kids. It's not as much the problem of... You okay, know, so you just, you, we, like, we just agreed that it was a multi-leveled problem, and now you're giving me like a, a one thing. Like I'm not going to sit here and tell you that just dumping money into a school is going to make it better. You have to take an insanely multi-tiered approach to fixing these problems. Unless you think black people are somehow... Well, that approach has to come from within the black community. So we just sit here and wait then, and we just say, well, blacks figured out, good luck. What makes you think that's going to change? come up with something for the black community we always get told by the black community to keep Hi, our Destiny. fucking voices out Why of it was nobody I wants to hear what you guys say because you put us in this problem so you don't think the black, least... the black community doesn't want help from anybody else to, to fix their problems they just they don't want people telling them what their problems are it seems definitely seems accurate If they're not even willing to identify, I mean, first of all, I don't think even the vast majority of black people I've talked with on this issue, and I like to have constructive kind of conversations with them on this issue because I think it's very important. Will not even agree that, first of all, the family is a problem. I mean, if you can even get them to agree that illegitimacy is even a problem in the fucking first place, I mean, that's one thing that I get from the left a lot is that illeg what's the problem with illegitimacy anyway? Don't see that way, so I won't argue that with you, but th th we're. If people aren't even willing to agree that illegitimate children is a problem, I mean, that's a real issue as well. I mean, I have a hard time believing that a lot of black people just have kids because it's fun, but I guess maybe... I'm thinking that a lot of people have kids just because it's fun. That's why people have sex. A lot of people it, do, at least. You know, that a, you know that having sex doesn't mean that you want to have a kid all the time, right? I, I agree. It doesn't cost all that much to make sure that you don't. I mean, I, I, I don't understand why... Just because they're poor, that means we need. Or, I, first of all, I don't think I also disagree with the notion that you know, two percent of the black community, uh, which is three times the rate that the white. Whereas black poverty is not the same rate. I, I, I guess what I'm just trying to say is blacks are not synonymous with poor. What? Not synonymous with poor. They're not all impoverished, right? Of course. Oh. So, saying that subsidizing their uh, 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 birth control, that's not going to be the problem. Because a lot of times the problem isn't cost here. It's culture, really, more than anything else. So you think that there are a lot of black women that just have a lot of kids because they enjoy that? They have they like having the kids out of wedlock? It's culturally accepted within the community that that's not much of a problem. Interesting. I've, that sounds pretty ridiculous to me, but... I'm in the black community, I imagine. <laughs> Like I actually, you know, I, I don't want to play the I have a lot of black friends card, but I, you know, I in the black community and I have friendly relations with many of them. I mean, I, I I've taken part in it, and I've seen that this is a very common lifestyle for a lot of people, just to rely upon the government. I mean, the term welfare queen is a horrible term. I agree, but like that's not it's not entirely fallacious either. So I just looked up this Cato study that you were mentioning that had to do with Kansas City, right? School experiment, yeah. Yeah, so they, they offer suggestions in here and reasons for why it failed. They're just throwing money at the school it isn't going to be enough to do it. Um, suggested ideas for improving the school, such as replacing the school board, hiring a dean and a full-time counselor for troubled children, coming up with a new curriculum, encouraging parental involvement, um, and improving communication. There it is. What? Encouraging parental involvement. Yeah, one of many things. This is saying exactly what I just said. That my it's opinion, a... in my humble opinion, that's going to be the number one thing. Sure, Maybe but you I, implied I, I, earlier I that like black people were incapable of working in schools. That's what your earlier implication was. That they tried to take. Black... I did not. That you inf you inferred that. I certainly did not imply. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. The, the way that it sounded was that they took black kids and they threw them in expensive schools and nothing happened because, as you said earlier, high IQ people um, black going. Yes. What? black school districts and they elevated them and they didn't have much of an effect. 
Yeah, so, so you're making it sound like it's a problem with like black people, but the problem wasn't that that elevating a school district has no effect. The problem is just that throwing money at the school doesn't work. That you have to take a more complicated, more, more nuanced approach to it, or at least according to this Cato study that you cited, nothing in here implies that these children were just completely and totally lost causes, but rather that the money wasn't going to the right places. I think they were lost causes. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what you implied, that they elevated black schools and it totally failed. That kind of sounded I like- I, the I didn't. I specifically gave you the symptom. That, that, that the, the biggest symptom, I'm not saying it's the only one, but the I mean, definitely the biggest symptom is the home life. And you're saying definitely that the home the life is a problem that's intrinsic to black people. That it's more common for black children to be raised in poverty because no, okay. it's Hold much on. more common for black people to be you raised gave us poverty. you gave us this line of logic you said that black people have problems that are intrinsic to black people i asked you earlier about having kids out of wedlock you said well maybe that's a black, to black people. oh my god dude. I said that's what that you said you said common. black people yeah, yeah you said more okay common. why are they more common continue to have children illegitimately I honestly why do they have children okay. So now you're going to retreat back to the I don't know why black people are more prone to it than white people. No, I never claimed to know. Oh, because earlier you made it sound like it was you said you had some friends and you said that it seemed like black people were OK with having children out of work, out of wedlock. You said that I trying said to that make that's it. That's my opinion. Yes, that my opinion, it seems like in this community, one of the problems is that it, that they it is not a problem within the community to be seen as somebody that has a lot of children illegitimately. OK, so but but you don't think this is a problem intrinsic to black people? I think it's much more common within the black community, yes. Why is it? Okay, that means it's... Okay. For the Hispanic community to be the exact opposite. If you think that it's... If you think that it's more... Why is it more common for the Hispanic community for that type of... of, of uh, illegitimate children within the Hispanic community acceptable in general? Okay, because of the... Obviously, many cultural reasons, many religious reasons, that is true. So, I mean, it's not... But that doesn't mean that all Hispanics have children in marriages or all blacks have children out of marriages. It's not intrinsic within the community, but it's more common. If it's more common in a certain community, then you're implying that that community is predisposed to it. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? And it's, it, it's cause I mean, intrinsic, but it would, no other community would have it then, right? It's no, more common. No, that, that's, that's not what that means. You're saying that people, black people, are more likely to have broken families than white people for reasons because they're black. I think it's generally saying that it's like essential to that community. It's not. I mean, okay. It's so I ask. So belonging. why is it part of the black community and not part of the white community if it's not socioeconomic reasons? I don't honestly know. I I I don't know what why so much, many more of them do it but they do do it and that's if you the don't it, know if you don't know then why are you suggesting that a way to fix it then if you don't know anyway I, my way to fix it is to for it to stop your way that's, to fix it is to do nothing but just tell the communities to fix it that's that was your way to fix it earlier solution what, is, so, what that's what i mean their solution is that we're we stop butting into our business in general who, who is they? Who are if you these? were to ever try to implement this, you know, uh, this Planned Parenthood uh, 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 birth control into specifically the black community to solve this problem, I mean, they would immediately lash out at it. Pre predictably, they would. If you were to open a Planned Parenthood clinic in a black community, you think they would all lash out against it? They wouldn't want access to low-cost contraception? I said that if you, if you implemented this policy with the specific goal of stopping black illegitimacy, they'd have a problem with it. They absolutely would. Gotcha. I have, do you have any examples of any black people across the United States protesting against the availability of abortion or contraception? Or is that just a hunch you have? I said, I said that they would have a problem with an approach that was directed specifically to stop black. You don't have uh, to approach uh, them only. specifically. You could do set low, low income areas. And that's also going to mean, the cost of, first of all, implementing such a, 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 a program was, is going to make it politically non-existent in the first place not really great. because the cost of all of these programs where they've been tried has been massively successful a 2009 study cost savings from the provision of spe specific methods of contraception and a publicly funded program examined the cost effectiveness of contraceptive methods dispensed in 2003 to 955,000 women this is a california policy that they had for every seven dollars that they spent or for, I'm sorry, for every $1 they spent in services and supplies, $7 was saved on behalf of the state. So it seems like these kinds of things save a lot of money. Colorado has a oh, similar thing. 
what's what was the effect of illegitimacy on that? Well, I mean, in, in most places in the United States, when birth control and contraception is made more available, illegitimacy, teen birth rates, and unplanned pregnancies seems to fall. So, I mean, it seems I really like it don't think that there's much of a correlation between the two. You I really don't think like... there's much of a correlation between... What specifically? I mean, I... All I can say is we can, we can identify what... Here, hold on one I mean, second. In a study titled The Impact of Subsidized Birth Control for College Women, evidence from the, De the Deficit Reduction Act posted in 2013 shows that with the passage of the Deficit Reduction Act of 2005, Congress inadvertently and unexpectedly increased the effective price of birth control pills at college health centers more than threefold, from $5 to $10 a month to between $30 to $50 a month. Using two different data sets, these guys basically put together a big thing showing that you could trace the increase in... Um, in uh, conception rates between women that were relying on, on this type of um, funding to pay for their birth control. There was also, um, I want to say in Brazil, there was an issue where uh, two birth control companies started colluding, and you can actually find the exact week that it happened and then go nine months from there and then follow the outcomes of the increase of the price of that birth control to a whole bunch of, to like a 4% increase in unplanned pregnancies as well. I can find that one for you if you want to. So yeah, I mean, it seems like birth control is pretty effective at reducing the number of people born out of wedlock or in unplanned pregnancies. Yeah, condoms are very uh, uh, great at doing that too. Yeah, I don't I don't see why the pill needs to be the be all end all and we have to pay for it for the rest of the country. I mean, I would rather like, I mean, pay they, for that. Well, it's a woman's health thing too. The pill has other positive benefits as well. But I mean, it's it just seems like entire, a Going back to what this entire line of, of inquiry was started from was essentially the the impact of segregation on the on the pro, on the fall on the problems within the black community today whereas obviously i've pretty much shown here that the problems really are more about illegitimacy whether we can solve that or not then maybe we should do it how can you, I, you claim know, you've shown that when you just admitted that you don't know why these problems exist your literal line earlier was i don't know why these problems exist reason how to think that those problems exist because of segregation because when we were segregating them the the, the problems did not exist Okay, I guess this just is, every single person that seems... This has worse over the last 50 years. Yeah, sure, because there are a lot of issues that are uniquely facing the black community. Like, some metrics will one get... One of them anymore. What? Segregation isn't one of them anymore. Racism from whites Black isn't one people of them are anymore. still artificially segregated due to policies like redlining and gentrification. They live you... around people that they that they share things culturally and community. Black people the don't fact, always live there the because that's where they wanted to live there the watch, entire time. Watch, a lot of the times they were... more effective than the juror segregation is just as effective, in fact. People self-segregate. So you think that, that the whole, all the redlining and the gentrification stuff is a big meme, that people actually all wanted that, that developers and stuff didn't push people out of certain communities to, to whitify them they or did. anything? They did. Yes. Yes. Redlining existed. So that happened. sounds yes. like not, that doesn't sound like self-selection to me. Since we've made that federally illegal in 1967, we're still just desegregated because people choose not to live around people. I mean, Asians you think maybe it might be hard to like escape your city and move to a totally different place? You don't think there might be some barriers to that? But people still, still I mean, people, the blacks moved in the Great Migration when they were just as impoverished and they were, in fact, under segregation still when they migrated in general and they still selected their own communities to live in. I mean, even taking away in po poverty rates and taking away i mean they still chose to establish communities around themselves i could be wrong but i have a feeling that if black people had the opportunity to choose where they wanted to live and they were freely able to go wherever they wanted to i don't think they would choose to live in like projects and ghettos i mean i could be wrong there but the that's city just that a guess. i live in i mean the city that i live in the area where the blacks live today absolutely is a ghetto but when they moved in it wasn't a ghetto i mean it was a beautiful well-functioning aspect of society i mean it was a great neighborhood gotcha so what so what is your backing up what is your ultimate um opposition to, to trying to help these people what, why, why did you not like it so much we do whatever we can to help these people it's not really doing ha having much good <laughs> okay I mean, so then the goal are, is to just say fuck them blacks take government assistance more than any other group by a wide margin in the okay. united states thing to help the community in the long run i mean really the the, the same problems in the black community are still extant they're still really in the same proportions that they, as they always were gotcha okay um do you have any final thoughts or whatever or anything else you want to talk I about i guess okay fine wait i'll, I'll fine i'll throw a fucking final thought in here I, I you know i i was roped into this to talk about you know 
why I think white culture exists, and we didn't really talk about that at all, I guess. Well, so, do you want to talk about why white culture exists, buddy? I'd love to talk about that in the United States. That was really was, was okay. my entire purpose. Well, I mean, for... like, I started off asking about, like, white shit, and you said you didn't believe in it that much, and you didn't want to talk about it, so I don't said know. that we can talk about race, but it's not, you know, the number one aspect of I mean, culture is really a much bigger part, but culture is part of race. Okay, you know, what I mean, is it, white culture not... to you? What does that mean? Uh, in general, you know, I mean, it's the stereotypical picket fence. Uh, so your idea you know, of white culture is having kids. picket fences everywhere and 3.5 kids? Ooh, most white people in the U.S. don't have 3.5 kids. What does that mean? It's just getting, I mean, it's the same fucking straw mans all I'm not, I'm just, I'm just asking. Fuck, you're the one. I asked you for a definition of white culture. That's what you wanted to talk about. What, it's, it's the suburban li lifestyle. It's, what does it's, that it's, mean? It's, it's it's raising your kids with a you know it, it, it I define white culture you going to let me do that Yeah go ahead Culture in general was you know for instance the culture that created 90% of American innovations and that allowed for things like, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of speech, for instance, is in general, globally, almost solely, you know, white uh, cultural aspect. I mean, you don't really see it in many other cultures. Uh, that's one of the things, I mean, freedom of association for uh, cultures and religions. I mean, uh, enlightenment principles in general come from Europe, they're part of white culture and they were embedded into the constitution by white Americans. Uh, and okay, wait. Can, these, these so are you're giving me impacts or whatever. Can you tell me what what does it mean to be like have white culture? So like, let's say that I have a person and I go to visit their house, okay, and and I'm looking for white culture. What am I finding like that this person does or that he culture, practices? Culture is so much more segmented nowadays. I mean, that you're not going to see the same exact things in every single person for white. But I mean, things like uh, NASCAR, golf, tennis. I mean, these okay, are so NASCAR is what I need to be white into. Sports. For, for white culture? Yeah, just not, I mean, there, there are certain, not every single person that's into NASCAR is going to be white. Not every single white person is going to be in NASCAR, but that is an aspect of white culture, just like country music is. Just okay, like so I have like, to like NASCAR, country music, what other parts of white culture? You don't have to like anything. But okay, can you, the, get, like, can you name some uh, things that more than just like literal rednecks like? like oh my God, literal rednecks like country music? I mean, I, that's... Yeah, that's, kind, that's I, kind of where that's kind of the whole point. Have you ever listened to country music? I went to I went to I went to schools and universities in the north. I mean, they were out, every white girl I knew fucking loved country music. Like, it's it's definitely not a redneck. Uh, so when they all so how much country music do you listen to? How many uh what is it Tim McGraw right. songs are there where he's talking about driving his BMW? <laughs> what? Just getting my Mercedes and like what? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so what? What? What are these? So would rap not be black culture then? Is that by? So rap isn't black culture by your understanding then? Um. Well, it's, the problem black is it's culture. like really hard. It's really complicated. Um. In some ways, there isn't no. So there isn't race cultures. There's no black culture then because it's really hard to really <laughs> define which elements of black culture actually are black, right? In my personal opinion, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it's really, really hard to draw those lines. Never see eye to eye if you don't think there's a black culture in a Here's white another twenty dollars um, because someone RT keeps kicking, wait, hold on banning me from Discord. Ask, when when Blast came out, never saying, like, they said love anything black bad. Culture and never did anything it, wrong. That, then they're you know venerated by people all over the political spectrum. Whereas whites come out and say, "Hey, I love white culture," and then people like you come out and say, "No, no, no, you don't have a white culture. You only have a Polish or a German or." And and then you bring up you know oh we took their culture with slavery it's like Americans are not specifically one ethnicity okay but most white Americans are a blend of different European ethnicities because so we have a distinctive white culture in the United yeah, so States yeah that yeah and, and I'm trying to ask like what is that white culture that's what I'm trying to figure out and so far all I've gotten is NASCAR for tennis instance, and... one of the things is low is is small government uh, politics small, white so what about all the liberals that are in favor of larger government or what about the people on the right the neo conservatives. Not all white people close to small government. There are many white, com in fact, I would imagine most communists in the United States are white. But uh, if you just look at election polling data from any racially divided uh, uh, piece of, uh, of data. So white culture is the 
is the way we vote. Oh, Trump is white culture. Or? Trump isn't white culture, but Trump was a, a a result of white culture, certainly. I guess like this is just so confusing to me. Let's do you have a do you have a background in music by chance? Oh. What's what is your background in? What do you do? What's like a hobby yeah. you have? Um movies. What? A t film. Film. Okay. So like if you have a big background in film, this would be like somebody saying that I think um I think Tarantino movies are the best movies of all time, better than any other movie. And then somebody's like, "Okay, well like what is it about Tarantino movies you like?" And they're like, "Well, they're the best and I like them all and they have actors and um some violence." And it's like, "Okay, that's not really like the the the, the core. That's not like intrinsic to Tarantino movies. That's not like the defining aspect of the genre that is Tarantino." Like it seems kind of like a for somebody that's so passionately coming out in favor of supporting Tarantino movies, it seems like you would have more to say than that. So when I ask you, like, you feel very strongly about white culture, you really want to make it the center point of your argument, and then I ask you, well, what is white culture? And you're like, well, I can't name anything that's really part of white culture except for, like, tennis, well, NASCAR, and Trump. Religion, freedom of speech. I just freedom and religion and freedom of speech right? are things that a lot of people from other ethnicity. I can find you a lot of Asian people and a lot See, of black people. It is almost solely a white cultural discipline. Globally, it is. Okay, there are name a single non-white country that that even gives a fine fuck about freedom of speech overall. That's I mean, I can name white countries that attack freedom of speech. I mean, the United Kingdom has a much different view on freedom of speech oh, than we do. I mean, we're the only. Yes, you can name I Germany can name has Islamic, a much different. I can name Islamic countries that allow gays in them. That doesn't mean that Islamic culture loves homosexuality. No, exactly. But you would, but you would, but then you wouldn't. Gen then you'd probably wouldn't generalize Islamic culture like that, right? It's not. It is general. You would say things like maybe in Jordan, people are more open to homosexuals, right? I think Jordan was one of the first countries in the world to legalize um, homosexual relationships or marriage. And you would say like, well, a country like Saudi Arabia really doesn't like gay people, right? So you would like localize it to the country. I mean, Jordan was trying to westernize. I mean, that was really the main reason that they were doing it. They went through many cultural reforms. Wow, why would they try to westernize? I thought that they weren't white people. Why would they care about Western values? It's almost mimic like white, they're trying to mimic white culture. They're trying to essentially. Uh, yeah, that's what every that. that's what all culture is. You realize that, right? That all culture is derivative. That one person didn't invent the concept like a of cargo cult culture. What? It's so basically cargo cult culture where they're attempting to basically establish the same. Uh, uh, social positions that we had yeah that's what all that bring... every, everything in the world comes from stuff before it. That's how it all works. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it's not yes, like it's... Yes, that's, that's, that's accurate. Yes, I, I, I'm not saying that white culture evolved separately from anywhere else, but I'm saying there are aspects that of white culture that you're not going to find in non-white cultures. Only gonna, that every white culture is going to have them. It sounds like there are some ideas that a decent amount of white people have that other people like those ideas too and, and, and want to take them on. What's the problem with that? I don't understand. And we've got a lot of people in the United States that are non-white that like our culture. The more people that we bring in who are non-white, the more they're going to vote well, for non-white political interests. Well, this Discord is so interest, inclusive and And that's nice. going to further the demographic collapse of the United States. And it's, like, I get it. You don't care that America is going to be a majority minority country. I do. That's really essentially the difference. Okay, but I care about what happens to my country. So you say this. Can you give me an example so of... Your country is going to be determined largely by that fa by that uh, uh, socioeconomic... I mean, the, excuse me, by that demographic change. Okay. That is going to be... I don't care about major... the demographic change. It's they're Americans. It doesn't bother me. What I'm asking Maybe. is... Is there oh, is yeah. there evidence of, like, do these people try to change and get rid of freedom of speech in America? Like... Has that happened? Like Hispanics have come over and they're trying to make us into a socialist government or? Yes, because they're not a socialist government necessarily, but a government that's more dependent on welfare, more dependent on the social safety net, more dependent on government assistance than ones that we've had in the past. Okay, is there like actual evidence of, of that happening? Like it seems like for the, the most part- demographics in California, that's exactly okay, it right but there. Like, I haven't seen California like California try to like state. destroy capitalism in the United States. I haven't seen them move any- It's a any, red like... state for fucking, uh, 1848 to 1980, they were mostly, most of the time they were a red state. That would never happen again. And the only reason it would never happen again is because the demographic differences in California. California whites vote Republican. If, if California, if only white people exist in California, Trump would have won California. 
if if only and i'm not even calling for only white people to exist here i'm just saying that immigration policy has gotten out of whack and it has been out of whack for the last 50 years in this country i guess like i would just i guess like if i saw much. what i get that you don't and i get that you don't see why it's a problem because you're to you you don't you don't think that a, a hispanic and a white person are going to disagree about something uh a, I guess what, what, I'm kind of mixing up my thoughts here. Essentially, Time you don't see you how Hispanics fun vote buddy, in blocks, less than three. whereas whites generally don't. As I mean, I think people better. vote in certain blocks for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Sure. Little into the white countries vote as blocks. I mean, that's why, for instance, the mayor of London today is a, a Muslim. You know, there were plenty of whites that voted for him, certainly, but he got 100% almost of the Pakistani vote in London, and that is about a city. Sure, and a so, lot I mean, of black people voted for Obama, sure. Not voting based on uh, values. They're voting based on skin color. I mean, like, how is that any better than white people voting based on skin color? Shouldn't our goal be to create, like, a society where everybody votes and they're as informed as possible? Shouldn't that be the goal? Like... Yes, but the problem is that when we're, when we're bringing in people who are voting based on skin color, then whites do, if they want to retain a conservative or a low government or just their essential cultural socioeconomic policies, I mean, they're going to have to start voting with favoring their group over other groups like every other non-white group does in Western countries. I guess like I just I have this view of America and of democracy working a certain way where people try to push the ideas that they think are the best and you try to convince as many people as you think you know should agree with you that your ideas are the best rather than all of my ideas are only going to apply to one race of people. It just sounds like a really sad way to look at democracy that the only way to make sure my ideas win are to keep a certain skin color of people here. That seems like a really sad way of looking at things. Yeah, I agree it is. It is very sad. That's the 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 current voting trends in this country, I absolutely agree, are very, very sad. Well, the current voting, well, I mean, I would agree with that because Trump won, but I mean, like, again, like, not even that big, I'm really not that big of a fan of Trump. I think the the, the fact that he won and his immigration policy are, are, are commendable to a certain extent. I didn't personally even vote for Trump, but um, uh, the the problem is that we can have this idealized view of you know people picking ideas over skin color, but when you have you know, for instance, 95% of blacks voting Democrat for elections. When you have Hispanics I mean, like, voting... I mean, like, that's not necessarily just black people's fault, though. Like, Republicans kind of fucked themselves there a lot on that, too, with things like voter ID and gerrymandering and shit. Like, Republicans don't really do themselves any favors, my dude. I understand how voter ID is a, is a racist system to have. Like, because hey, usually I, when I Republicans try to implement it, usually they try to just keep black people from voting. That usually... Black people like... can't get an ID card? Poor people tend to not be able to get ID cards, and when Republicans try to make it, so you just have to do it. You just have to do it a certain amount of time and months in advance. You can get an ID card for free. Okay, but you're putting a barrier up to one of your most important constitutional and rights. You're putting a barrier. You people should have IDs in this country. Well, I'm sorry, dog, but the Supreme Court disagreed with you, so I don't know what you want me to say. Like, if you look at places like North, they, there should be a law that they have them. But I'm saying that people. If you want to make it, here's how it has to work. If you want to make it legally required to have an ID to vote, then that ID has to be supplied to you for free, my dude. That's the only way it can possibly work. And it, it is. It's if not you though. Do it a certain amount of time in advance. It's only the if you do, yeah. But the more restrictions that you the, the more restrictions that you put on it, the harder it is to make that work. Why would you restrict somebody's constitutional right to vote? And that's not the only thing Republicans try to do to make the poll safer. They I also, just don't. I, I I'm not even saying I'm in favor of voter ID laws. I'm saying I don't see how it's intrinsically racist. Well, because in places like North Carolina where they tried to implement it, it was racist. But essentially, what you're saying is that blacks can't get an ID. No, I'm saying that poor people generally have harder times to get IDs, and that in North Carolina they specifically found the types of IDs that black people used, and they made those not allowed at the polls. So yeah, I would absolutely not be in favor of that, but that's not... Okay, you know, that's I, great. I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't be in favor of it. I think there is a Republican Party that can exist that black people like. I'm just saying that the Republican Party, as it stands right now, doesn't seem to do itself many favors. It doesn't with women either, with their well, positions on things like party. abortion. Like abortion, I mean, like so, it, blacks are even more religious generally than whites. I mean, a pro-life black large actually in this country. Abortion is the this the reason that blacks aren't voting Republican.
I'm yeah, sorry, you got cut out a little bit. What did you say? Republican, vote Republican is all coming down to, find, uh, to uh, financial decisions and, and, and to, to uh, the government safety net. I mean, Republicans have some... And government, that essentially means that Republicans have to change their platform to get blacks to vote for them. So that means they have to be more liberal to get blacks to vote for them. And they have to be more liberal to get Hispanics to vote for them. Do you not see then how this, these, this fact, this population within the country is forcing the Republicans to be further to the left? I mean, I'm, I mean, Republican policies are pretty shit, my dude. I don't know what to say. You have to change, like, I mean, you have the whole Southern strategy opinion. shit, like Republicans that is haven't. Your opinion. What? No, it's that not. Is, I, well, I, I guess it's my opinion objectively going forward. Republican strategy is pretty shit right now. Republican policy is pretty shit right now in most Free, areas. I actually prefer living in a country that has, you know, a small government policies generally. Then and you I don't, generally... and then by your own admission, you don't like the neoconservative party that exists today. So even you don't agree with them right now. The party was taking my tax dollars to go fight wars i wasn't involved in goddamn fight i didn't want us to go into iraq or afghanistan i don't want us to go into syria john okay. mccain's a fucking piece of shit for constantly trying to get us to go into fucking syria well that came under the republic or started under the republican party continued under obama those but fucked up those were idiots who did it but that doesn't mean I mean, the republican party had to kind of change because uh, you know the neocons generally stopped talking about immigration that was one of the main main points of neoconservatism in america is that they let immigration go they stopped talking about it for 30 years that's why Trump won, because he started talking about it again. All right, I'll give you the last word, my dude. I have to do other things. Do you have any final parting thoughts? This was, you know, it, it's about what I expected. You know, I, I don't I don't claim victory or anything. I definitely agree that you. there were definitely a lot of points that you made me think quite a bit about. You know, we're not going to see eye to eye on this. And I guess that's where we're going to go forward from here. Gotcha. All right. Well, hey, listen, buddy. I appreciate that you were willing to come on and talk. Um, I, the only thing I guess that I would ever ask is that, like, I think that there are issues that you're focused on that are important. I just wish that we would look at them in different ways. Like, black out of birth shit is definitely a problem. Black crime is a problem. I'm not gonna sit here and say they're not problems, but I wish that there were better I ways to. Talk about black crime. Sure. Important. I just wish there were better ways to look at it than we just have to tell all the black people to fix the problems and we can't help them at all because they don't want our help. Every time I come up with a solution, it just doesn't seem like they want to listen, so. All right. Well, thanks for the conversation, buddy. Stay safe. Yep. Goodbye. <sighs> All right. That went okay-ish. We need, um, I need to come up with more stats. Fuck, I couldn't find some things on the fly. I had a lot of stats ready, but not absolutely everything. Um... I thought that the, Why um... Why do you keep talking to these Aspies? Wait, so what happened to that Ninosaur guy? Why is he so mad? What happened to him? Right to BA. Um, I thought that the, uh, black, um... The black two-parent household thing was starting to improve since, like, the mid-2000s. Is, um... Does anybody have a, a source for that? I couldn't find it. I was looking for it, but... My dude, that was a doozy. Or it might, might, it might not be true. I could have been wrong as well. I'm not sure. I need to, um... Rate per 1,000 married, unmarried... Oh, non-marital births is, would be what we were looking for. Hello there, Steven. Thank you for being on the front lines against these guys. You deserve a break. How does Bustin make you feel? Gashigasm. Bonus meme. Keep Ninosaur out. Oh, this is really interesting. The fertility rate of married African American women fell from 137.3 per thousand in 1950 to 70.7. Had their fertility rate remained the same, the percentage of African American children born out of wedlock in 1997 would have been 36 percent, not 69 percent. Interesting. Wait, Ma Ma I don't agree with Can you please link that? Unskilled labor because everything I've read says that unskilled labor will be replaced by automation, leaving unskilled immigrants with no job, no prospects and no immediate economic prosperity. Am I retarded? Um 
No, but that's like a whole other conversation that the country is just not ready to have yet. What we're doing about automation. That's like a problem that we just have no, where no one is caring about it at all right now. It's going to be a huge thing. When automated driving happens, that's when we're going to finally have to address that. Well. Wow. Wow. How did it go? Okay. All right, anything minutes of ads, be careful, mates. Ask Destiny why he won't talk to Ryan again and so much about Nick. Um, Ryan is too good of a snake oil salesman. I need um I need to have like somebody trained in genetics and shit to like actually talk to him about that. He's way, way, way too deep into the conspiracy memes. Um he's also a dishonest little fuckboy piece of shit where he presents himself as like a really nice, kind person, but then on his Twitter he spews a whole bunch of hateful fucking shit, which makes me question his motives. Um but yeah, I would I would never get into I feel like reasonably confident about my like physics knowledge. Um, but um, I would never get into a debate with the world's smartest flat earther because I would lose that debate every time. I think we can all agree you deserve to play a nice, relaxing game of league after that debate. Angel thump if you agree. Angel thump. <laughs>